Hey, hey, this is Lacey, your Las Vegas gal, coming to you from downtown Las Vegas. I am actually inside, uh, it's obviously under construction, but I'm inside one of my favorite um, local, I guess she's a business person, but she's really more of a local, I don't know, world changer, if you will. Um, she has a new location downtown, right near Ferguson's downtown, and she is basically building the future of our young children here in Las Vegas. Her company is called Future Makers. I talk a lot about uh, what she does on my Instagram, but I haven't done a good job of sharing what she's doing with you guys here on YouTube. So I'm excited to do that today. So Melissa Flaxman is the owner of Future Makers. She's the founder. Um, she has put together an amazing program that works with the children and the youth in our community to help them learn how to be future entrepreneurs, future makers, be more mindful, more conscious, human beings really as they're building their life and moving forward. So she's got my heart and, and then some kind of wrapped up in her soul. I've been watching what she's been doing over the last year. I've been really moved by some of the stuff that I'm seeing her programming bring forth to our city. So I took a few minutes and I sat down with Melissa. She's a little nervous on camera. So we did a, we did a pre-interview and uh, we discussed all the great things that Future Makers is doing for Las Vegas and for the children of our community. So check out our little interview. And then also she took us through a tour that you can check out of this new new space that's being finished up so that they can be located in one place where all the kids know where to gather and they can really make the impact that they're trying to make on our city. So check it out. Welcome to our workshop space. This is where we are running summer camp currently. So this is set up right now for our six to 14 year olds. Um, this is our maker's space. This is where the kids are able to do art, science, technology, and our favorite, which brings all of that together, tinkering. So I will either have a make for them or I will give them materials and an idea and then they come up with their own make. So talk to me about some of your programming. I know that you are, you know, you're purposely working with other people in the area to kind of come up with specialized programming for the kids. I know you're doing a summer camp now, but overall, what does your programming look like throughout the year and what is the end goal for each of the age ranges? So we're really excited about this new space mm -hmm. um, and all of the opportunities that we have in the space. Mm -hmm. um, so we do have some new stuff coming. Mm -hmm. um, so we will be programming now for zero to two okay. and three to five. Okay. classes and we're going to be setting up like a membership style oh that's smart um so they will be able to access art okay. preschool skills Great. um and also music okay. through that program um, of course i love story time crafting yeah. so we'll be throwing that stuff in there Perfect. um so basically a, a maker space mm -hmm. for littles I love um it. and their parents okay so that is parent and me programming okay and that uh, happens purposely throughout the year while the other kids in the household are at school right? absolutely okay. yep so that's going to come after august 12th okay. when the kids are back in school okay so we'll actually be releasing that in the next week okay great and people can start signing up for that membership i love it um and we'll be offering about three classes a week okay Okay, cool. um, for the little ones. I love that. Um, so that, um, my goal there is to um, be seeing them grow Yeah, that's, that's through what I was the program. Ask you. Yeah, because you're starting with them from the beginning yes. in hopes that they'll continue to come back and you'll be able to watch them evolve over time. Yeah, yeah. Um, as a teacher, right, watching them implement those skills is the best part. Yeah, so. that's the whole reason you do the job. Yes, yes yeah. Totally <laughs> I'm Melissa with Future Makers and we're going to take a quick walk from Ferguson's over to our new space at the Gather House. Um, this is Ferguson's uh, courtyard, which is almost finished. Um, in the courtyard, there's going to be restaurants, vendors. You'll be able to take classes um, while your kids are hanging out with us over at Future Makers. So you can, you'll be able to see how close that is. And then right across the street from Ferguson's, we have Market in the Alley, where we have our kids space uh, once a month, the third Saturday through um, September and then after that we'll be back to the third Sunday. Are you, um, I, I know you haven't had a ton of trouble in terms of integrating into the city. Everybody seems to be kind of welcoming you with open arms. Um, do you see challenges in the next year or so as you're trying to grow? And if so, you know, what, what, are you, what are you expecting to come so that I can maybe see what we can do to help share the word and try to overcome those challenges? Thank you, you. Lacey. Yeah. Um, so I, um, 
As an educator, it's a great responsibility, safety, um, and making sure that everything we do is research-based, sure. everything is purposeful, mindful, conscious. Right. Um, that takes a lot of time. Sure. Um, so especially right now with looking for instructors, sure. uh, volunteers, I feel a great responsibility in making sure that we have uh, spoken to them, vetted them correctly, making sure they're part of the community. Right. So we're looking for people to reach out. Okay. Um, and then other people maybe who know those people just um, so that it stays where it's more of a family style. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I definitely think, you know, when you're working with anyone's children, there's a liability, there's safety, there's yes. concern, all of that. But so safety is one thing, but separate from safety, I, I think it's amazing that you take such great care to ensure that you're not just slapping a program on the wall and right. saying, hey kids, go play and do this. You're yes. genuinely trying to be very conscious about it and passing that consciousness onto the kids so that they understand the depth of what you're trying to get to. Yes, them. absolutely, yeah. I had so much fun. I came in uh, a couple weeks ago, as you know, to visit with the kids and just to say hi to you. And I got a full tour of this new space, which I, I'm gonna have you walk us through in a little okay. while. But um, what I got most excited about it was the kids were stoked to show me the Zen Den. Yes. Where they sit and they meditate and they gave me a full you know, rundown of the heart rate and how the heart and the mind are connected. And I just thought, wow, I, that's not something you learn in school. That's not something that's taught typically in any school. So did you pull from um, your educational background? I know you were a teacher for a long time. Were you pulling kind of from areas you feel are lacking and you're trying to fill in the holes? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I, when I'm speaking with the public, I don't always mention that because I like to stay positive. Sure, sure. Um, but we all know what's happening in our community. Sure. Um, and in our community, there are definite holes. Yeah. Um, and I felt them specifically in the three areas we focus on, sure. which is art, um, wellness and STEAM, I or um, I call it tinkering, yes. because I believe that all education should include science, technology, sure. all of the components. Mm -hmm. um, but the wellness um, is actually run by our wellness coordinator, mm -hmm. um, Elizabeth Grundell. Um, we've been friends for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, mindfulness is something that's very important to me. Mm -hmm. um, it got me through personally mm -hmm. as an educator. Mm -hmm. and. When I was working with kids in the special education population, that was what I felt was the greatest frustration for kids and parents, sure. was how do I keep my child um, calm, sure. engaged, involved, mindful, happy, right. um, ultimately happy is sure. the goal, right? right. Um, so that would be connecting um, your brain mm -hmm. right, to your heart. Um, like we said, making sure what you're doing is purposeful. Sure. Um, so we talk a lot about emotions, mm -hmm. um, working together, mm -hmm. right? How your positive energy spreads. Mm -hmm. um, and just having an area in the room for kids to go and reset. I love that. I love that. And knowing that resetting is okay, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. that, that we all might need that minute to get into a new mind space. Right. We have our Zen Den here, um, and this is a special area, again, created by our wellness coordinator, Elizabeth Grendel, um, and this is an area where the kids can come to reset. Um, also, every morning, we start in here. Um, we do positive affirmations, talk about intentions for the day, and then Miss Elizabeth um, has a specific program that she uses with the children, which is called Heart Math which is all about having your heart and your mind be in coherence, balance. And the kids are able to practice that daily. And then sometimes you'll find them back here just practicing on their own. I think that's um, really important when you're teaching kids how to create something from scratch. You know, I know you're essentially creating the young entrepreneurs of our city, which <laughs> makes me so excited and pumped. I know we're calling them makers, but really they're entrepreneurs yes. and they're being trained at an early age to learn how to make something from nothing, yes. how to market it, how to sell it, how to price it, how to how to connect with people, how to network, how to learn. I mean, it's just incredible to me, just all the depth of just even that component of your program. And I know it's that's the pinky on the hand of what you offer. This front space here is known as the Gather House. Um, and Ferguson's is going to start activating this very shortly with vendors and classes up here as well. So the adults, parents, families can be taking a class up here. And in the back, we have our lovely workshop space. 
So do you feel like um, you're going to run into issues with growing the program or do you have concern that it's going to grow too fast? I mean, this is still kind of a baby. What are your dreams and goals and what are your fears along with all of this? Uh, so I'm actually very excited that it is growing and it's growing in um, the areas that I envisioned it growing Wonderful. in. Um, so we, we are a partner now with uh, Discovery Museum um, and we're going to start working with Springs Preserve now. Perfect. Um, so the community has just been amazing um, so some of the words you're saying to me they also say to me yeah. so even our places like our museums sure. are, are looking for the community to join them in this effort. I love that. Um, so and you're really kicking it off I mean, <laughs> in, in a big, big way. So I hear that from them um, and it feels good and I hear it from parents too. Mm -hmm. And while, while it feels good, it also feels like I would love to have more people joining us. Yeah. Um, and um, it's a responsibility. Sure. So I'm really trying to um, lead mm -hmm. um, in a way that makes it look doable. Makes sense. Um, so part of my vision is bringing other educators out on board. Mm -hmm. um, part of my vision is, is so that all educators can be paid what, they're des what they deserve, sure. so more places like this can exist. So that's, that. that would be the challenge, right? Yes. Going that's up against fear, that. Right? That's yes. my fear, yeah. is that people won't get it, mm -hmm. um, that there won't be enough um, interest, mm -hmm. um, and that um, it could stop, because right. sometimes things can be fads, Sure. Um, and, and you even, don't want to be a fad. Right, I don't want to yeah. be a fad, right? Even though making might go away, mm -hmm. um, we want these young entrepreneurs to be embedded in mm -hmm. the community and for this to be something that continues and spreads. Sure. <laughs> so this space here is our library and I am really trying to set it up in a way that kids will enjoy reading. Um, so I brought in a lot of different kind of books that I've been collecting for a very long time. And instead of just having a full bookshelf, um, we try to stay very specific to what the kids will like. That's something I really believe in, is only having out things that are purposeful. So I ask about the fears because, you know, I think a lot of people when they're doing um, interviews or they're learning about a new business or something cool going on, that they're always just so focused on what we're planning, what we're doing, what our goals are, that nobody ever takes a moment to say, well, what are you scared of? Like, what can, what can we help as a community overcome with you ahead of time? And if we don't know those fears ahead of time, how do we overcome them, right? So I do think that that's a valid concern. I do think, you know, finding the right educators, finding the right partnerships, about continuing to grow the knowledge, not being a fad, making sure you can pay people what they deserve, staying positive, staying motivated. That's a lot of pressure on one person. <laughs> so how are you personally coping with just the pressure of this role and um, and wanting to evolve and grow it and, and also seeing how fast it's growing? Maybe you weren't quite ready for it, I don't know. So how are you doing, you know? Um, I think that actually the kids help the most with that, yeah. right? Um, the kids keep me going. Mm -hmm. um, the kids are the motivator. Yeah. Um, so that's how I'm blessed in this. Sure. Um, I feel like maybe in a lot of other um, positions where you are pushing, you might not have that immediate um, feedback mm -hmm. and gratification. Right. And because I love children, sure. that that is the motivator right. for me. So they fill your soul, fill and, soul. and it's and it's almost um, what. Whereas others might say. You know, I gotta send the kids to daycare for the day, or I need someone to babysit them. You're going, no, I need them to come to me because right. they're refilling your tank. Essentially. Yes, they're refilling my tank. So as, as long as they're happy, I'm happy. Perfect. Good. <laughs> and I think that's super important that that means that 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 is your focus and your goal because I can see so, even myself, I've struggled with you know the expectation of others, right? And then worrying about, well, wow, all these people think I'm amazing. Now I have to be amazing. I didn't yes. even think I was amazing before. So I'm certain that that comes along with what you're doing as well. And and I think. I think you're being really awesome about nope it's about the kids it's not about me it's not about my ego I know you didn't even you know you didn't even like being in front of the camera so I totally get that um, and appreciate your time and talking about it but I just am super impressed with the program so I guess to close out I just want to say like so if you were to kind of meet someone on the street and they asked you know what do you do or you know what's your mission in life how would you kind of explain what you do with Future Makers and what this program offers to the community to someone who knew nothing about you? <laughs> so Future Makers is ever evolving, so that, that answer changes a lot, mm -hmm. but really it's just helping kids make their future. Um, it's helping them get the skills, um, the community, um, and the motivation mm -hmm. um, to be a maker of their future, right? right? I, I decided that 
you can't be passive right. in that every single day all of us are making choices right. that will affect tomorrow. Right. Um, and as soon as a kid is able to make that connection in their brain, right. everything changes. Okay. Um, so that's the goal, is that a kid will be able to see if I do this, this will not only help me, but maybe even the world sure. to progress. Yes. And then to be able to make those connections. I did this yesterday. Yeah. This is what is happening today. Um, and, and to know that they can really do anything. Um, that's another thing that really, um, when you within the school system, there's so many parameters, right. so many and boxes. boxes yeah. Right. It's not a you can do anything right. type world. Right. Um, so I just want them to know that a lot of those rules, boundaries, things that maybe have been placed on them are by society right. and that we can push past that. I love that. Um, and the way that I see that is through our tinkering. Mm -hmm. So those are mm -hmm. the activities mm -hmm. that we do that show that you can move beyond, beyond the boundary. Yeah, yeah what's happening that. now. I love that. <laughs> Thank you. So this is a print uh, by Recycled Propaganda and it expresses visually kind of what the library stands for for us. So she's standing on these books. I mean, a lot of these prints, there's a fence here, and it's showing how knowledge can bring you up, or oh, get you over whatever it is that you need to get over, surpass. And we've got our little kid reaching to the sky here. I mean, it's, I know this is a small, you know, small localized program right now that's got, you know, you've got a handful of kids involved and it's growing very rapidly. Um, the awareness of you is obviously growing very rapidly as well <laughs> throughout the valley. So tell me what your dream is. What's your vision? I mean, talk five years, 10 years from now. Where do you see future makers and how can we help you get there? Oh, thank you. Um, so actually, you mentioning the mindfulness is interesting because um, I don't know if you talk about these things, but we're working on a grant right now okay. that would help us push that out to the city. Wonderful. Um, so mindfulness in the schools okay. is a program that we, that we'd like to start pushing out okay. locally in Las Vegas, and then of course I'd like to get to California where sure. I feel like. Um, it would take off a lot quicker. Mm -hmm. um, so we'd like to be in other locations, sure. and then of course having the curriculum push out sure. um, nationally. Yeah. Um, and then we've even had people offer um, some global stuff. Wow. As far as like uh, maker spaces. Wow. And kind of partnerships and things. Uh -huh. Wow. So your vision isn't just for Vegas, which Not I love, <laughs> but I love that you started here because yes. I think that the impact will be great and it will be felt and it will be seen and known, and, and we're the case study, right? This city is the case study, and I think that it's gonna be very evident very fast that your idea is gonna take off. Proof of concept, right? Yeah. If you can do it in a city that is rated what we're rated, we yeah. all don't even talk, we know what it is. Um, if you can do that here, I think we could probably do that anywhere. I love that, I love that. And I think too, you know, um, people like you connecting with others in this community, especially downtown, I feel a synergy happening. Yes. I see that the desire is so pure and so so on the right track that I, I can't see anything but good things. You're not a fad. I don't think you're a fad. <laughs> Thank you. I'm so excited about what you're doing. I'm so grateful for your time today and I'm excited to share whatever I can about future makers with my audience, but also just with as many people who listen, yeah. frankly, so. Thank you, so yeah. that's what we're looking for, it's just more kids, more families, yep. more parents who wanna share in Wonderful. Um, what we're doing and, and joining that family. Wonderful, I love it. Well, I'm wishing you the best of luck. I'm so excited that you're a part of our city, and I'm excited that now the world will know about what you're doing. Thank so, you, thanks again. Yeah. Yeah. So I hope you fell in love with Melissa and the idea and the goals of Future Makers like I have. Um, I just really would encourage you to get involved. Go to futuremakerslv.com, follow her on Instagram. Um, if you want to comment below with any questions or any feedback, that would be awesome too. But really, Melissa is really focused on changing the future for our city. And as you can tell from the big dreams that she has for this program, she wants to help kids learn how to make their own future with businesses, with ideas, and just also just being the best person that they can be. So I love Melissa. I want to thank her so much for spending time with me today and for showing us around their new digs. If you're in downtown Las Vegas and you want to learn more about it, be sure to swing by and check it out. Otherwise, please like and subscribe to the video like and subscribe and if you like the video comment below and we'll talk to you soon